Well, I think the capacity for evil is something that is not easily distinguishable from strength. You know, and, and I mean, my, my knowledge runs out at this level of analysis in some sense. The world seems to be structured so that we have, that we can act for the good and we can act for evil. And I think that's associated with self-consciousness. And I think that's illustrated in the story of Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve become self-conscious, the scales from, fall from their eyes. They realize that they're naked. And to realize that you're naked is to understand your vulnerability. That's why Adam and Eve clothe themselves right away. Oh no, I'm naked, I can be hurt. Okay, I can be hurt. I have to clothe myself, I have to protect myself in the future. You actually become aware of that in a way that animals aren't. Well, what does it mean that you're naked? It means that everyone else is too. Yeah. What does it mean that you can be hurt? It means that everyone else can be hurt too. It means that you could hurt them. And that's why the knowledge of good and evil goes along with the knowledge of nakedness. That took me a long time to figure out. It took me about 30 years to figure that out. So why are those two things conjoined? Oh yes, when you understand that you're vulnerable, you understand that everyone else is vulnerable, and then you have the option of exploiting that. And so that, that's what transforms human beings to some degree from animals, because a predator just eats you. But a human being, a human being can play with you and will for all sorts of reasons. Now, the capacity to do that, though, why is the capacity to do that, let's say, useful? Well, it's useful to be strong and not to have to use it. That reflects something that we talked about earlier, because it makes you formidable. And I think that you have to be formidable in order to move forward properly in the world, even to get through obstacles that aren't... Just to get through obstacles. You have to have some strength of character. You have to have some commitment, and some of that is there will be a cost if you interfere with me. It'll be the minimal cost necessary. Let's say if, you're, if you've got yourself under control. It will be the minimal cost necessary. But do not be thinking there won't be a cost. And I don't think, I don't believe that if that's not built into your character, then you have, you have no strength. And you certainly have no strength when you're pushed by someone who's malevolent. A bully, if you're like that, if the bully pushes you, and your response is, there will be a cost for pushing me, and you will pay it. Then the bully will go elsewhere. And we know that too from studies of bullies. You know, like even ch childhood bullies. They push around they pet. kids, and then they find the ones that retreat and withdraw, and they bully them. So, and you know, you might think, well, usually children are bullied because of some abnormality. That's a very common idea. It's like. There's a guy named Dan Olwys, a very smart Norwegian psychologist, and he studied bullying for a long time as a precursor to fascism, by the way, so that was his interest. He said his analysis indicated that at least three quarters of children have some obvious abnormality that could be the focus of bullying attention. It might even be your name. It doesn't take much of a genius bully to come up with a good way of making fun of your name, or you're too tall, or you're too short, or, you know, or or your brother's too tall or too short, or there's something. It isn't the abnormality that is the cause of the bullying. It's the abnormality might become the focus of the bullying, but part of the cause is the withdrawal in the face of the bullies, because the bully thinks he can get away with it. Well, if, if you're, and it's also the case with children who are preyed upon by adult predators. Like adult predators of children look for children who are easily cowed and who won't put up a fight. So, for example, if you're teaching your children to be terrified of strangers, that's really not a very good strategy. You want kids who are confident and who will make a noise if someone messes about with them and who are, who are, who are, and so that, that, that characterological strength has to be built in.